Well, when Democracy Now! was at the 2011 U.N. Climate Change Conference in Durban, uh, Amy spoke with Mark Morano, publisher of The Climate Depot, a, a website run by the Climate Denier Group Committee for a Constructive Tomorrow. She asked him about, the pre about President Obama's record on climate change. His nickname is George W. Obama. Obama's negotiator, Todd Stern, will be here today. They have kept the exact same principles and negotiating stance as President George Bush did for eight years. Obama has carried on Bush's legacy. So as skeptics, we tip our hat to President Obama in helping crush and continue to defeat the United Nations process. Obama has been a great friend of global warming skeptics at these conferences. Obama has problems you know, for us because he's going through it uh, through the EPA regulatory process, which is a, is a grave threat. Uh, but in terms of this, President Obama could not have turned out better when it came to his lack of interest in a congressional climate bill and his lack of interest in the United Nations Kyoto Protocol. So well, a job well done for President Obama. That was Mark Morano of Climate Depot. Naomi Klein, in your book, This Changes Everything, you talk about him. In fact, you talk about a number of these groups. You open with them in a chapter called The Right is Right. Okay, well, they're, let's be clear. They are not right about the science. They're wrong about the science. Um, but I think what the what the right understands, and it's it's important to understand that the climate change denier movement in the United States is entirely a product of the right wing think tank infrastructure. Um, the groups like Heritage Foundation, Cato Institute, American Enterprise Institute, the Heartland Institute, which people mostly only know in terms of the fact that it hosts these annual conferences um, uh, of, of climate change skeptics or deniers. It's important to know that the Heartland Institute is first and foremost a free market think tank. It's not a scientific organization. It is, it is it, it, just like the, the other ones I listed, it exists to push the ideology, the familiar ideology of deregulation, privatization, cuts to government spending, and sort of triumphant free market, you know, backed with enormous corporate funding, because that's a very, very profitable ideology. Um, and when I interviewed the head of the Heartland Institute, Joe Bass, for this project, he was quite open that it wasn't that he found a problem with the science first. He said when he when he when he looked at the science and and listened to what scientists were saying about how much we need to cut our emissions, he realized that climate change could be, if it were true, it would justify huge amounts of government regulation, which he politically opposes. And so he said, so then we looked at the science and we found these problems, right? So the issue is, they understand that the, if the science is true, their whole ideological project falls apart. Because I said, as I said, you can't respond to a crisis this big um, that involves transforming the, the, the foundation of our economy. Our, 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 our economy was built on fossil fuels. It is still fueled by fossil fuels. The idea, and this we, we hear this from a lot of liberal environmental groups, that we can change completely painlessly, just change your light bulbs or just a gentle market mechanism, tax and relax, no problem. Th this is what they understand well, then in fact it requires transformative change. That change is abhorrent to them. It's, it's the, they see it as the end of the world. It's not the end of the world, but it is the end of their world. It's the end of their ideological project. So that is unthinkable from Mark Morano's perspective and Joe Bass's perspective. So rather than think about that, they deny the science. Um, so when I say the right is right, I think that they have a better grasp on the political implications of the science, of what it means to how we need to change our economy, uh, and what the role of the public sphere is, and, and, and the role of collective action is, better than some of those sort of big, slick, centrist green groups that are constantly trying to sell climate action as something entirely reconcilable with a booming capitalist economy. And that's, that we're always hearing about green growth and how it's great for business. You know, yeah, you can, there will be markets and green energy and so on, but other businesses are going to have to contract in ways that, that, that requires that strong intervention. I've been